Hello and welcome to Fertile Minds. My name is Dr Elizabeth Maxwell and I'm a fertility specialist at IVF Australia in Wollongong. Today we're going to talk about five factors that can affect female fertility and make it hard for you to get pregnant. So we'll go through them one by one. Number one, menstrual irregularities, which can mean irregular or infrequent cycles or no periods at all. A number of things can affect your menstrual cycle. One of the most common is a condition called polycystic ovarian syndrome. And women who have polycystic ovarian syndrome often have quite infrequent periods or sometimes absent periods. A sign that you are ovulating regularly is a regular period. So if you're not ovulating regularly, then your periods will be irregular. Other hormonal factors can affect your menstrual cycle as well. Sometimes you can have something called hypogonadotrophic hypogonadism, which is a very long and technical word. However, what it means is that for some reason, and this can be low weight, excess exercise or excess stress, the hormones from your brain have sort of shut down and they're not acting on your ovary as they should to release an egg each month. This can make your periods irregular. Number two, anatomical issues that can affect the position of your ovaries, the release of eggs or your fallopian tubes. In order to get pregnant, each month an egg has to be released, it has to be picked up by the fallopian tube it has to meet the sperm in the fallopian tube to be fertilised and then implant in the uterus. In some women, there can be anatomical abnormalities that can interfere with fertility. One of the most common conditions, one in 10 women in fact, that can affect fertility in this way is endometriosis. Endometriosis is pockets of endometrial tissue which are outside of the uterus. This can cause scarring in the pelvis and can cause anatomical blockage of the fallopian tubes as well as block the egg being released from the ovary. Endometriosis can also cause a lot of inflammation in the pelvis. So even if things are not anatomically blocked, it can still affect fertility and implantation. Another condition which can cause blockage of fallopian tubes and scarring in the pelvis is a history of untreated STIs such as chlamydia or gonorrhea. If these are undiagnosed and left, then they can cause something called pelvic inflammatory disease, which is essentially scarring within the pelvis and inflammation. If it's severe enough, one or both fallopian tubes may be blocked by this. The other thing that can happen is that you can have abnormalities in the uterus, which make it very difficult for the embryo to implant. So these could be things that you're born with, such as a different shaped uterus, it might have two horns to it, or there could be a division down the middle of the uterus, or it can be something that you've acquired, such as an endometrial polyp or a fibroid. Often these may need surgical treatment, but can be picked up usually on a routine pelvic ultrasound. Number three. Medical history. Some women have complex medical backgrounds. They may have received treatment for cancer as a child, which include chemotherapy or sometimes even radiotherapy to the pelvis. What this can do is it can scar the uterus so that it's difficult for the embryo to implant, or if it's chemotherapy, it can actually affect ovarian reserve so that you have less eggs than a woman of a similar age who has not undergone chemotherapy. These days, before starting any type of chemotherapy or radiotherapy, most cancer specialists talk to women about fertility, so they may have already undergone fertility preservation. However, if they had their treatment a very long time ago when they were a baby or a very young child, they may not have. Another thing that can affect fertility is chronic medical illness. So things like diabetes, which is difficult to control, or any chronic illness really, can affect fertility as well as your menstrual cycles. Number four, lifestyle factors. We know that many lifestyle factors play an important role in fertility. 
These could be things like excess alcohol, smoking cigarettes, taking other recreational drugs, or having a low or very high BMI. All of these we know can affect fertility in an adverse way. So it's important to try and reverse some of these factors by stopping smoking, maintaining a BMI that's within the healthy range, and not drinking to excess. Number five, last but not least, age. Female age is probably the most important factor that affects fertility. From the age of around 35, but probably from even before that, female fertility begins to decline. This is really difficult because a lot of us are not ready to have children until we're in our mid to late 30s. But your ovaries think differently and really this is a really difficult thing to try and treat even with all the technology that we have through IVF and assisted reproductive technology. So if you are thinking about having a baby and you're in a relationship or in a place in your life where you are ready to have a baby, then it's a good idea not to leave it into your mid thirties. If you've been trying for 12 months and you're under the age of 35, and you're not having any luck, then it's probably time to see your GP initially or a fertility specialist to get some investigations done to see if there's anything going on. It doesn't mean that you'll jump straight away into IVF. There might be just some lifestyle tweaks and you may conceive without IVF. If you are over the age of 35, I wouldn't leave it for 12 months. I think you should seek help after about six months of trying. Equally, if you have any of the things that I've mentioned in the five factors that can affect fertility, like a history of endometriosis or a chronic medical illness or you've received cancer treatment, then you really should see a fertility specialist very early in your journey, even if it's just to make a management plan and to optimise your medications or lifestyle in order to improve your chances. Thank you for joining us on Fertile Minds today. And as always, if you would like to hear more about all things fertility, then please subscribe.